Yeah! Woo! It's time again. I'm Mia Voss. This is the Mia Connect Power Chat. We're going to talk about green. Look at me. Matchy matchy. And you guys have all seen this. This might be my new prop. I don't know. Could you let me know in the comments what you think? Because, I, you know, this way it looks like Mickey. This way it looks like Hamburger Helper. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right? I kind of like it. So, listen, awesome. we, right, we've got an amazing show for you today. Today is all about celebrating spring. I know some of you are feeling like it's not spring yet. And i got to tell you, I live in Colorado. You know, they always say that to not plant until, like, after Mother's Day. We pretty much go until Memorial Day because you never know. We could get jammed with a giant snowstorm. We've had a good winter, though. So, with that, we're going to be talking about sustainability, green tips. These guys are going to get you all kinds of fired up. So, I've got one Shauna... Mm. And two Waynes. Hello. And welcome to the show, Shauna Coronado. Hello, darling. Hello, hello. I love my, my little queen hat today. My girl, you are the queen of green, and you are out of my home state of Illinois and Chicago. Is that right? It is correct. And for you gardeners out there, I'm in zone 5B, and it's been 40 degrees this week. Mm. Yeah, you're like, that's, that's a, what I call a Hertz donut. I'm telling you, I want to get in the garden and get in there fast. <laughs> and get out there. We're going to talk about all about your garden, too, because once oh, you guys... Wait, you, wait yes. I have to interrupt oh. you, because I brought drinks today, because, girlfriend, we are celebrating your anniversary. We are, you guys. So, in case you guys don't know that, Shauna was my very first show, like Eva. So, if you saw the link <laughs> that she posted, it was so much fun. Oh, remember, you guys have to go watch it, because literally right before that show started, the FBI showed up at your door. <laughs> And yeah. so the FBI showed up to my front door. It was crazy. <laughs> Not for anything she did. It wasn't for her gardening or anything, although you never know with that one, right? What do you call lady? <laughs> so, yes, Shauna was, my, Shauna was my first. She popped my cherry here on Google. Yay. I, I love could, that. I could not get any better. And Bob Voss's cherry, too, actually. Yes, I love Bob. Yeah, if you guys go to the end of that show. Again, it's on there. You literally, That was the very first time. And he just remember, he just got up there and stood there and... He was, like, very straight. There was no comedian about him whatsoever. I'm no, like, no, it was very um, Bob like so that was his <laughs> first, first time, too. So next up, I've got my first Wayne, Wayne Metter, and I told Wayne he's got to tell people how to say his name because it could go either way with that spelling. So welcome to the show. Hey, Ooh. how's it going, man? Oh, dude, I dig that kooky lighting in the back as well. That is fun. Yeah, you know, I used it on the last uh, HOA that I was a guest of, and everybody loved it, so I thought I'd bring it back and and uh, make it happen. So I like it. It's a little edgy, it's, and you can tell people, like, you made it. You know, I made this out of two tiles and, a, you know, a piece of mesh. I mean, you never know. So tell us where you're out of. You're on the East Coast, right? Yeah. Yep, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm super excited to be on the show today. Um, I've got a surprise for a lot of you, or an, an announcement, I guess I should say. Um, so stick around. Towards the end of the show, we'll talk about it. And apparently, Wayne has a big reveal for us. Is that correct? It's, it's coming. <laughs> it's, it's free coming booze. Real. It's <laughs> free booze. That's now, that, see, now you guys know why Shauna was the first one on my show, because we are kindred spirits. And I will tell you real quick, we I met Shauna at a TEDx here in Denver and had the biggest girl crush and then tracked her down. So see how that stuff works when you, uh, when you see that. So, yes. And then, hey, Wayne, do you know what, uh, what grow zone are you in? Speaking of which. Uh, 7A, I think, or right on the verge of 7A, 7B in the Carolinas. So. And we're going to get into that, you guys, so you'll know when you see those on, plant, on you know, little seeds and things like that. It literally is like your time frame when you can start the seedlings and everything. Is that correct? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Mama kind of knows a little bit. And then next <laughs> up, I've got my other Wayne. Wayne next, who is really sporting some swag today. Hello, my friend. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Woo! Where are you out of? I bet people can guess if you just talk for a few more seconds. Well, I'll give them a second or two, but I'm coming from southern Louisiana, Youngsville to be specific. Yes, my friend, and this is what's great. We're going to talk about food because Wayne is looking for good cooking, which I think is awesome. <laughs> I love Always it. looking for good cooking, right? Oh, hey, let's tell you, why do you think I'm going to start another show called Food and Booze? Hmm. See, I got the best of it all right here. So um, do you know what grow zone you're in, brother? I think it's a, it's 10A, I believe. That uh, yeah, like get, because it's been warm for how? What's it like down there right now? Of uh, 76 degrees. Oh my God! 
Now that's a Hertz donut. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we need to be down there with you and my, my brother Lance is in, in uh, Louisiana or in uh, New Orleans. So, all right. So, guys, we're going to get to mm -mm, the bat pack because you know how much I love you guys. Listen, um, as you know, the more you comment, that means one, you're going to get in on the, the uh, bat crap crazy list. So, please comment. Uh, the biggest thing I want you guys to do is take advantage of these guys because they're really going to be serving up some info. Like I said in the in the description, it's not going to be too hippie, although I love hippie. I love Crystal Rubin and hippie. <laughs> but it's going to be it's it's going to be a lot of good information. So please take advantage, ask questions even if we don't get to them here. All these guys are going to answer your questions afterwards. So hey, here we go. First one up Brad brother Ben Fisher. Hey, all you fantastical plusers. Boss it like a boss. That's a new one. I haven't heard that one. That's a good combo plate, brother Ben. Happy HOA Friday. Uh, Digidesk coming out of the UK. Hey, Lainey, love to see you. Get back in the saddle. See you over the four girls. That's my girl, Lainey Sullivan, is here too. Lance, speaking of Louisiana, greetings and salutations from New Orleans. Get ready to be bat crap crazy with the Mia Connect. That, thank you, Felicia, for that. Um, oh, Mark Seidel. He's such a good advocate for any of these events. If you guys don't know him, he has HOA shows. He is the biggest HOA hookah in the world. I say that in a nice way. Please remember, it's not too late to share and invite more people. Don't you love him? Mm. Who else we got up in here? You guys have anybody you want to say hi to, speaking of which? Well, you can say hello to my wife, Dawn Nix. I know hi she's girl. watching. <laughs> I saw her earlier. She's in the background running the show. All right, we've got a couple more. We've got Backyard Homesteader, who I know Wayne had said it follows him on YouTube. This is right up my alley. I'm an old school homesteader. Let's talk about that. I want to get that into the description, too, because that, uh, that's, that's something um, that may, maybe most people don't understand. And then we've got my girl, Lynn Abate Johnson. Sounds like a fabulous lineup. Mm-hmm. And one more from Barb. Thanks for the invite. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Just a record, what is spring? We don't seem to have it here in Clearwater. We go from hot to cold to blazing to hot. Yeah, that's Florida. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel so sorry for you. I really right, do. Because John is in there. Except now I, I will say. Sweaters. Yeah. <laughs> right, I know. We're all like bundled up. I will say I did a bunch of work in Florida, you know, for my construction business. And I remember thinking, I was there in the wintertime. I thought, gosh, I can live here. And then I did a project in the summer. And the bugs had saddles. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, F this. <laughs> I don't know what, what to do with them. So, listen, guys, before we get into the discussion about, you know, really specific with tips and tricks and all that kind of stuff, I want to have each of our guests talk about what it was that inspired them to start on this lifestyle that's become their business. Um, I said in the green room, you just don't wake up and go, man, shit's effed up. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Yeah. With the environment, uh, there's something that is a pinnacle moment uh, for each of you. So, Shauna, I'm going to start with you, darling. You are kicking it hardcore with doing what you do. So, tell people more about what you do, how you got started, what the inspiration was, honey. All right, all right. I am a blogger and a writer, and uh, the the beginning story is I was working in sales and marketing, had a giant argument with my boss like this. One of those arguments, you know, it was horrifying. horrifying. The queen had lost her crown. It was bad. I have a feeling that about 90% of our audience that's entrepreneurs had that same. Yeah, I totally identify with that. It was a nightmare. And uh, I came home, and uh, my husband's like, well, what the heck are you going to do? You just lost, you know, six figures for us every year. And, and I started doing landscape design because I enjoyed gardening. And that led to uh, me going from 18 prescriptions a day down to two prescriptions a day. By the end of that summer, all that physical labor was so good for me. And I went green. I reduced all my chemical intake and all the stuff I was breathing in our house we had all these open cabinets with chemicals and I packed them all away and totally changed my life well at the end of that summer it was like a miracle uh, I'm like I've got to share the miracle with the world you know and I went crazy and I wrote this book called gardening nude which sounds really naughty I love but it's that. not naughty at all <laughs> and, uh, the how it, that started is my husband said you know we're laying in bed one night and I'm like, how do I get a full grown man to pick up a green book that's never thought about being green before? And he jokingly said, Girl, you've got to be naked on the front cover. <laughs> and laughed. And the next morning I woke up and said, Yes! You I should know better. Like, oh, what a it's nuts, you know. But but it led to something more. It led to social media and the need to market a book once you have it up. 
And uh, you know, I started out with no followers, no love. It was very, uh, it was a sad situation. But uh, it was before the kick in of the real blogger situation. You know, the real power bloggers and all that. Mm -hmm. and, Can you give uh, me a time frame on that. What year was that, Shauna? Uh, that was in 2008. Okay. Yeah. And the next early spring, I invited Chris Brogan to have coffee with me. Right. And when he came into town, because I'm like, dude, you're the master. Tell me, you know, what do I do? And, and his answer was surprising and shocking. You've heard it before, which is, you need to get off your ass and do video. That was mm -hmm. an exact quote. Yeah. And I got off my butt and started doing video. So now I have 170 videos on YouTube with over a million views. Uh, I have, uh, you know, 120,000 followers on Google Plus, and I have madness in all my other social me media venues. And the secret, the secret is, is that the socially good message is what drives me. And what my goal is, is to connect with as many people in a personal way as I can so I can try and get this message out to the world. And it's changed my life. It's amazing. Uh, I just, I wish I could do like some church music going on with it. <laughs> and can I tell you guys, this is another quick aside on that. That was actually how I got the impetus to start my show because I'd seen you at TEDx here in Denver. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, you and she gives this awesome presentation. So let's um, let's find that link, Shauna, and put that up there too. I put it, it up. I already put so, it up on the, the commentary list. Girl, so. She's like, yeah. girl, please, I got this. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. And I saw the interview with Chris Brogan. I was like, oh, that's it. You know, I, I was like, that. this is what you can do. And you just made it so so simple but gave such good information mm -hmm. and a connection uh, and really showcased him too, girlfriend. So you got the workout. I'm going to ask you a quick question on that. When you talked about um, you, that you found all these things out about your home and your cabinets and all that, can, tell me how you got the education piece because a lot of people wouldn't have figured that out. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You don't, you don't, my husband, the genius. Okay. So every time I get went into my laundry room, this is what kicked off everything actually, before I even was into gardening. He went into the laundry room with me because I kept complaining that something in that room made me feel sick. Hmm. Like I, and I didn't know it was breathing issue or whatever. I felt like vomiting, you know? I felt yeah. like hangoverish and right. it, whenever I walked into the laundry room. So he I said and this is what I said, I said we're going to remodel the laundry room. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, <laughs> hell no." We're not gonna <laughs> Because we're going to tour people through the laundry room at our house, right? Right. It's too expensive. So he runs into the laundry room and he's like, okay, what is it? And we figured out that all the chemicals were open in the laundry room. And it just so happens that the laundry room's in my basement directly below my bedroom. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Fumes rise through yeah. your house. So we packed, we went out and got these big crates and we packed all the chemicals up. And I'm talking about like just simple cleaning, house cleaning things, bleach, uh, the window cleaners, all of that. Yeah. Okay. Let a couple days pass by. Went back in the laundry room. No sick. I wow. felt okay. And so I started thinking about the connection. Okay. So I'm extra sensitive to this, mm -hmm. and when I'm exposed to it, this is the reaction. But imagine the millions of people that are exposed to it all the time that might not have an obvious reaction. I was still, just thinking your body, yeah, yeah, your body is absorbing all that. And so, how do I get that message out without sounding like an extremist? <laughs> this isn't an extreme thing. This is common sense. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when I say that to somebody, they're like, well, I don't have a reaction, so I don't have to pack away my stuff. And I'm like, well, what's causing cancer in the United States? Well, I don't know the answer to that. Right. I, that's what they tell me. So right. I don't know the answer. Why are you exposing yourself to so much? And it, you know, so that's how it then became this roller coaster, you know, or, or a, a rock rolling down the hill, where I'm riding with it, and it went faster and faster, and more and more people kept asking me, "I want to know more. I want to know more." And that's how we got to where we are today. Well, and I love it too that you thought about that because you guys know my two Waynes. You you probably had the same thing when you get really excited about these things. You have to spoon feed it a little bit because we we do we get so crazy about it. But other people are just like because it's it's going to take some effort to do that. When you make that decision, you do have to become a label detective and throw out a bunch of stuff. Think about these res different you know responsible ways to do it. But I really was thinking that when you said that, Shauna. There's some people that aren't affected, so they're like, so it must not be happening. Right. Well, and another thing is, is that if the chemicals are happening to me with fumes, right, they're affecting me with fumes, then are they affecting me with the way that I eat? 
and the only sunny spot I had on my property was my front lawn and so that's what started the front lawn vegetable garden because I'm like how can I grow organic vegetables for myself and have it be successful and so I ripped out my front lawn and planted this garden and now what we do is every year we donate about 120 to 150 pounds of organic food to the local food pantries as well as feed our family with it so it's turned out to be marvelous and a really good no chemical action to take in your life and, and yeah, I was just was reading because I know I, that's increased by the way because I remember originally it was about a hundred pounds, so you guys are even upping your ante. Oh, we are on, yeah. on, the, on the back then too. That is amazing. And then uh, tell us real quick, and then guys, we're going to get to you too. Can you tell me again what happened with the city? Um, that kind of also got you a little fired up when you. Yeah, when you I'm telling you, there's always something going on with me in the city. Okay, oh, so the front lawn vegetable garden was okay by the city, but they got mad at me because behind the fence I had planted on right of way property a native plant garden. I'm trying to uh, attract pollinators. I have a big pollinator initiative this year, and uh, for years I've I've had it out there. It's beautiful, and everybody loves this garden. And what happened? Uh, the city fined me for it. And so uh, word of mouth on Facebook got around and WGN News came out and did a story on this garden and it won an, an Emmy nomination and the story was really like well covered. But in the end what happened is I got mad at my city and decided well I can't revenge them in any other way except to paint my park benches kiss my ass green. And so <laughs> If you go see pictures of my back garden, and uh, look, I'll have to go pull one up for you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, it is about the Kiss My Ass Green Park bench, and uh, made me feel better personally. Uh, but I had, still had to pay the fines. I'd probably call mine F.U. Green. <laughs> F.U. Green. <laughs> Green, exactly. How long ago did that happen? Um, <laughs> that happened in two, two years ago where they fined me and it was a big ta -da all over the garden. Um, but I had to remove, like, a, I don't know, it was a ton of rock, a ton and a half of rock, and all kinds of issues with the garden. So now that I've paid for it, essentially, yeah. uh, I can keep it there, but I have to maintain it. And so, you know, that's part of the trick is that I'm always freaking out trying to make sure um, between all my speaking gigs and everything that I do that I can still get back here and really take care of the garden properly. It's like, right. it's like another, another kid, right? Oh, my God, oh, it I is. Love that. Wait till you see the comments. People are going a little bat crap crazy. And then real quick, <laughs> I'm going to, seriously, I'm going to head over to my brother Wayne Metter, but I want to pull out this comment from Lainey that she's here ready to hear the mini, amazing panel. Can't wait to see your buddy Wayne show his stuff, which is a true story. So, Wayne, talk about what you're doing. You've got a couple of initiatives. Oops, I've got a couple of, uh, oh, do you have a comment up? Oh, uh, yeah, I threw a comment up there. Oh, there. I love that. Uh, stepson number two and his buddies are taking over little spots of council ground by bus stops, roundabouts, around Brighton, UK, planting veggies and herbs. They can all cook better than me, too. Wow, that's a good family. <laughs> I know, right? That's the kind of the kids I need to have. <laughs> right? I wish I could get Bob Voss to do that. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> all right, so you've got a world for change, sustainability in action. Tell us what got you on this crazy kick. Well, it would I would say it happened um, a couple of years back when I really just woke up to the fact that I'm tired of um, professionally, I've been doing sales for the, the last several years of my life, and and um, uh, I'm in a professional appointment setter, and and basically I will call into C-level executives and book meetings for our sales guy to go and meet with them. Mm -hmm. and at one point, I realized that I'm just I'm I'm making good money, but I'm spinning my wheels when it comes to leaving a positive impact on the planet around me. I'm just not doing it as effectively as what I want to. And I wasn't connecting my work with my higher purpose or, or my value statement or, or your purpose statement or whatever you want to call that as an, as an individual. And um, so that's really what set it off for me when I said I need to think outside the box mm -hmm. and I need to take more control back into my own hands and, and not rely on people to, to bust produce in from other parts of the country or to ship in Native American plants from China and Chile so that we can buy it in a supermarket and eat it. So I said, you know, there's got to be a better way. And that's really when I started doing my YouTube channel, starting to talk more about gardening. I right. found Shauna back about a year and a half ago when I was researching gardening, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and that's my first touch with you was, I think, um, uh, when I was trying to understand how to make a garden look beautiful, um, 
because of your front yard stuff. So um, I started running a YouTube channel, and again, very part time. But over the past two to three months now, I'm I'm working on building a web TV show that's all focused on sustainability. We'll have guests in, and we can address you know one or two little points of interest in our life that we can. Um, uh, maybe it's just a gold nugget that we can take and apply to our life today so that we can be more sustainable and a little bit more self-sufficient. And that's really where I'm going with A World for Change TV. So awesome. a couple things. I know, isn't that great? And I, I, you're right, I kind of did need to out you because when I was talking about to Wayne about coming on the show, he had been on the show uh, The 15 Minutes with Christine and Mia, and I said, you know, you should come on. I'm going to have Shauna Coronado, and Wayne kind of nerded out. I do need to out you for that. Like, oh, <laughs> oh God, got, thank you. You got so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's so great. I also need to compliment you on the tiny faux hawk you have going on in your hair. I really do appreciate that. <laughs> you like that? I don't think I didn't notice that. I saw my cut my hair off, and it was too short, so I couldn't. I, I, I think everybody should, should comment on that. And then um, let me ask you this, too. So you're saying that you were working in corporate with C-Level and then made the transition to realizing about, you know, just this crazy process we have of trekking things so far. But tell me how you even thought about that in the first place, because that's kind of a big jump. What was your realization, or have you always kind of had that mindset about green living? Like, did you grow up with it, or what? where did that come yeah, from? You know, I, I grew up in central Indiana, farm country, small town, 1,500 me people. Too. <laughs> no. Yeah, Where, really? are Where are you from, man? Uh, Rossville, which is close to Kokomo. I'm from Kokomo. We are practically. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I totally grew up in Kokomo. Oh my my God. That is amazing. So 45 minutes from each other is kind of where our home yeah. home base. I love it. And then I got my Champaign, Illinois thing going on. So then there's that. So everybody Midwestern here. <laughs> But I get you that that I mean that's where I was aware of it aware of it as well. I mean, as kids, my grandparents had a, a huge garden, and you know we were we were day laborers. <laughs> as kids. Yeah. Well, you know, well, I remember going over to my grandma's house, and she was a master gardener. I mean, she was a certified master gardener, but she probably knew more than anybody coming out of a master gardening course. And, crazy. And, and you know, she taught a lot, but at the same time. Um, she never linked the the need for us to be sustainable because of our economic position in right. the world, um, because that just wasn't a challenge back then, or for them, they they were already past the Great Depression, things were mm -hmm. moving along really well, and and they didn't have a need to think about it as a, a self sufficient um, issue. They just made it, be, or they just gardened and grew food because they knew that's what they wanted to do to put it up. Mm -hmm. That was their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, with my parents, they did the same thing, but they never connected the dots between um, gardening and growing food to making an impact on the planet, you know, in a positive right. way that, that would really allow us to express. Um, uh, care for our earth, so to speak. Right. And and so that's r really what has um, that's the connection that I've had to put together over the past few years, and it's really been in the last two years that I've started to take action on it, and the last year publicly. So that's right. really where I'm going with it. <laughs> and think about it, guys, especially from the Midwest. I know you, know, my grandparents. I mean, that we would do all the veggies, and then we would can. So you know, but it was so wonderful in the winter time. We had you know the green beans and all that type yeah. of thing. So it was a labor of love. But that was a lifestyle back then. But then now it's come into the bigger picture because we're you know we're not, it's not just our tiny little postage stamp footprint anymore, right? Right. Exactly. Right. And, and so we have to be concerned if if, if as individuals living on the planet Earth, if we are not concerned about the footprint or the impact that we leave behind us, then, then something's wrong. I mean, we need to wake up, and something's going to change if we don't. So, And we can either take that change into our own hands and help to control that and mitigate some of the risks that are involved with living recklessly like we do as a culture. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, So it's up to us to make that happen, and it's either going to happen without us or with us. We can make a positive, you know, create a positive effect moving forward. So uh, that's just kind of the, the perspective that I'm viewing a World for Change TV from. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm leaning more towards the first six pilot episodes being uh, really just focus on food and, and food production and our food chain and what we can do to make, um, to make, uh, to, to help us to um, take that that knowledge that we can gain, just little nuggets using YouTube and HOAs like this, and mm -hmm. to apply 
it to our life. So, well, and first of all, I think you you should buy a little collapsible pulpit because that would be awesome. Because I just love you preach it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just like this little, and you just get out there because it it. Right? But yeah, I'm either on or off. It's hard. No, to dude, I, I'm over here going, preach it, preach it. What I'm loving, though, too, is that what you all both are talking about, and Wayne, I know you live this way, too, is it's about getting into, into a lifestyle now that's comfortable for you because at some point, it's going to get a lot crazier, right, guys? So you may as well get you know used to living that way. You know, Shauna, you were talking about, I'm, I'm assuming, the, you with the flowers, with the bees. I know, Wayne, you've talked about uh, seeds before as well. Um, when I was in California this past weekend, my brothers actually have a full-on, uh, they've got a, uh, what is it, the Tesla? Mm. I'm a little bit of a Tesla hoe now, just so you know. Um, but then they also have uh, panels, the solar panels. So they, you know, they've got that all hooked up. And then they had bees, and I brought back a bunch of honey. So they are living. Uh, it's it's this lifestyle we're talking about. It's easy to make. It's a little more expensive. We can talk about that too, um, to make the change. But brother, brother, preach it. So, but thank you for sharing that. So now we're going to go to our next Wayne. <laughs> Wayne next. Uh, Wayne, this Wayne wanted to be called Little Wayne. This one is just Wayne Nix, so we're going to mm -hmm. go with him. So welcome, and tell us about what got you all inspired, because you've got a kooky little story, and I like it. Well, you know, it's not just one facet. I have a few different things we could talk about, but I'm a nurse by trade, and you'll a nurse by trade. I've even been in administration, but mm -hmm. my story really started from tragedy, and mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, you know, I had a lot of personal tragedy that allowed me some time off. And when I had that time off, I started doing a lot of soul searching. And, you know, one thing to help me with that is I started gardening. And I remember as a child growing up seeing these huge sunflowers. They were huge probably because I was a child. But I remember <laughs> seeing them with my grandmother, right? But I think you said it earlier in the show, you know, we have to spoon feed people. Mm -hmm. And really what I want to say is that natural food tastes not just better. It actually has great taste to it. It right? does. And, and that was what sold me. So I went to a local farmer's market, and I started playing around there. And, you know, I, I got a hold to some chicken eggs that were just fresh chicken eggs. And I went home, and I started to make a recipe. And I cracked open one of the chicken eggs, and then I cracked open another one from the store bite. And just the difference in color and taste was tremendous. And from right there, I started researching, you know, what can I do? And um, I, I can go over some little tips on, on how anybody that says they don't have a green thumb, it's very easy to get started. And it, it's just a process. Once you get started, you start to learn more and more. And that's when I started to learn about things that are called hybrid seeds and heirloom seeds. Right. And getting further and further along. And I wanted to ask Wayne this too. You know, I planted a ton of cilantro, right, earlier this year. Everywhere I planted it, it didn't grow. But it grew up all around it. And it's because it's heirloom seeds. Now, I have chickens that roam the yard and things like that. They may have helped with that. I'm sure they did. <laughs> but, but again, these seeds, they, you know, they keep regenerating over and over and over. So if you get the right type of seed and you have the right soil, right, these things are going to actually just self-perpetuate them things. But not only that, they make you feel better, right? Not just physically from eating them, but you actually accomplish something. Mm -hmm. so. Way needs a little pulpit, too. You do. <laughs> that is, but I agree. I mean, healthy soil is the key to feeding the 9 billion people on Earth, right? And by 2050, that's the expectation. 9 billion people is a lot of people. Why aren't we all working together to do a better job of it? And let me just throw something else out there. Like, a lot of people don't know their state usually has a state agriculture department, which you can go to, and there's tons of free resources, right? And they'll do soil samples for you, and usually you only have to pay cost of shipping or something like that. So that's another little tip that some people might want to know. We, um, I love, and I'll tell you, growing up in the Midwest, because Illinois has some of the best topsoil in the world, right? That's our big claim to fame. Mm. Um, so I really was kind of spoiled with that too. We we would get a lot from the Amish. We I got all of our meats from the Amish. And then growing up as a kid, you know, that's what I knew. And then you know, got out on my own was like this sucks. So I definitely remember that lifestyle being a lot different. But I love that about the education piece as well. Oh, we got a little comment. What was that comment, Wayne? Uh, you know what? I lost it. I'm sorry. But basically, okay. Amen, it was, brother. It was, uh, yeah. You know, amen to whatever we were saying. Here's another one for you, though. This one was good. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, good. So, yeah, Wayne, uh, that's the thing I loved about that show, too, and same that we're pulling out here is what got you inspired and what, what's your story and what's getting you all kinds of fired up. Real quick, I want to get a couple more comments in real quick. My brother Jeff C. is in the house, and I know brother loves himself some bees. Bees are <laughs> responsible for 70% of the world's crops. Guys, we can talk about that, too. That is that is in a uh, dire situation for sure. Uh, Zara saying, green living 40 years. Get it, girl. Mmm. Love it. And then I've got uh, Candace says, wow, you're my hero, Shauna. I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. And then yeah. one more. She's so cute. Debbie Davis is here in Colorado. I think I'm going to be able to get into the garden on Mother's Day right on schedule. So I we I think we might be able to. Debbie, she's here in Denver with us, too. So guys, talk about, um, let's talk, what do you think are, let's get into some tips uh, that you think for us. So let's talk. Let's talk to people who have never done this before. So let's really kind of. I don't want to say dumb it down, but make it. Let's take it to the simplest level. What are some things you think people can get started doing? You know, obviously farmers market and things like that. Well, I mean, I think the first thing to do is just you know, like I said, you can research. Uh, usually, your state agriculture has some things that usually have these downloadable PDFs and that sort of thing. But a great thing to get started with is just herbs, right? You can grow them on your kitchen table. You don't have to go outside to initiate this and start growing that and you will you start to, to notice a difference. That would be one of my, my quick tips. I give that to everybody all the time. Which I'm loving too. And real quick, I just missed my own mark. If you are just tuning in, you're watching the Mia Connect Power Chat. We're talking about sustainability and green living. And I've got one Shauna Coronado, one Wayne Metter, and one Wayne Nix here on the on the panel with you today. So thanks for tuning in with us. So guys, with that on the ceilings, though, let's talk about that because you know there's a lot of stuff that's commercial. So what you know when you're talking about soil, how can we also choose stuff that's as close to getting natural, especially for some of our city dwellers? I have I have an answer for that. Get that girl. Get um, it. I think, um, uh, while I love to throw out brands that I'm working with and such, I'm not going to do that. Here's the deal: organic really means no chemicals or less chemicals. Okay. That's the bottom line. Organic yep. isn't some fancy, tricky thing, and I think that's the confusion there. So when you go out to look for fertilizer or soil or anything like that, um, ask about is it organic? Like you're going to a garden center, you pick up a bag, is it organic, isn't it? That's going to determine if you're, you know, if there's chemicals that are involved with it. Like I don't, I don't support miracle Grow. I will say that out loud. Okay. Um, the reason why is um, the blue stuff doesn't really help your garden. In fact, over years it adds salinity. Yep. It's much better to prepare your soil properly and you'll have stronger plants when you're talking about that. Um, the other thing is, is um, non-gardening. When you talk about sustainability in general, I stopped using big brand things. Like I stopped using paper towels. It was the hardest thing in my life, by the way, because mm -hmm. I, I was totally paper towel addicted. <laughs> the, the sustainable side of it was this. Um, the trees and such that they were grow that they grow for paper towels um, have excessive chemicals that are injected into them so that they are fertilized properly to grow quite fast. Mm. And they're farmed material, so that's good. I mean, a tree is a renewable resource. Um, but then uh, the process with which you get paper towels use tons and tons and tons of water and bleach. They bleach it. That's why your paper towels are white, because they've been bleached. And so when you talk about the entire process to get to the single paper towel that you had, I'm like, you know what? I don't think I need them. I think I can give up one thing in my kitchen to be more sustainable. Mm. And so it was paper towels and it was a year of me fighting trying to get rid of it. And what we did is I, I don't have one with me right now but I usually I have these little white towels and I use them. If I have to bleach them maybe I will but I really mm. haven't. Mm -hmm. uh, I get a, a bit it's just an um, aesthetic thing, right? I mean, cares. I'm cleaning up stuff off the floor in the kitchen. You know, it doesn't make a difference. And we have a little drawer for my my towels, and everyone's come to use them and adapt to them, and it's easy now that I've got used to it. So those are my couple of recommendations. What is another thing? thing. There's if you another put thing out a little line of Shauna towels, by the way, and I'm just saying, <laughs> that'd be the great right. thing. Sorry, Wayne, I had to get that out there. <laughs> um, that's fine. Well, another thing that I started doing was composting, right? I was throwing this stuff away, and it was actually adding to the cost to get rid of my garbage. Well, now I'm actually saving money because I'm composting and regenerating that in my own backyard. And I even play with worms, Wayne Meter. I do have a bucket of worms. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> that's called vermicompost. 
I have a, a quick comment from Backyard Homesteader. says, I run an organization that collects seeds and gives them to those in need. If anyone is interested, I won't post a link unless I get an okay from Mia. I've given over 3 million seeds to date. I say okay. What do you guys say? Yes, that's awesome. awesome. I say hells yeah is what I'm saying to that one. So um, with that on the compost idea, guys, talk about that. Like, again, let's make it simple for all of us. Like, what kind of items can I start uh, Can I start putting aside? Again, if I don't have a big backyard or a small kitchen, let's, let's always think in, term, think in terms of New York living, um, but maybe with a tiny backyard, what could I do? What can I start with? I'll tell you what I think the easiest thing to do is, and, and I may be off off from what you guys think, but I personally think the easiest way to compost in the city is with worms. And I, and I say that because... Back to the worms. Yeah, because you can easily have a small little bucket of, of compost that you have composting worms in, and it won't smell bad. Uh, the worms are going to pr produce um, awesome, awesome vermicompost or, or what they call worm castings, which is worm poop, for lack of a better term. <laughs> 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 I love worm poop on this show. No, but anyway, um, that's a first for me on my show. When 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 do you get to hear worm poop and everybody cheer? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is, it's very 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 affordable. You can get a, a thousand or five hundred or a thousand red worms from um, Red Worms Express and reach out to me if you want a discount code. I have a discount code for you there. I, I'm not paid for it, but RedWormsExpress.com, great company. You can order. Um, I think a thousand for twenty five bucks. You put it in your bucket and you start to throw compost in there and mix in a little bit of dirt or something that's you know organic from the outside and you have quick compost in the city. It's compact, it doesn't smell bad, and you don't have to carry it down the steps and out of your apartment. So, Do me a favor, um, when we're done too, if you will post uh, something in the comments that gives us exactly those steps, that would be awesome. Because I'm I'm going to start with that. I really like that a lot. Now here's a couple things. Oh, Christine says you are even more awesome, Wayne. Our girl Christine's in the audience. I love that. We have a little uh, love a, chat going on. Yeah, we do. Well, that's what this show is, a love fest, and I don't give a crap. If you don't like it, don't <laughs> don't get in on the love fest. That's what we do here. Um, now, here's an interesting question. I don't think I could give that up. Is it okay, the paper, paper? Girlfriend? It was really hard. You know what I, uh, in the end, the best idea ever is I picked either paper plates or paper towels. Mm -hmm. Right? I just picked one thing, mm -hmm. and we still use paper plates, mm -hmm. and I know that they're not good for the environment. Um, I kind of work a middle-of-the-road theory. I try to do one thing at a time gradually. I can't go cold turkey on everything. It's unreasonable to expect anyone to do that. It just doesn't work in our society. I think so, too. Gradual, it works. Well, here's a good comment, too, because Christopher Vogelman, he's been my peanut gallery today, but you're going to have to pry those paper towels from my cold, dead hands. Well, guess what? <laughs> That's what, right? That's a shtick. You know, we've all got our thing that we just, we need to have, so then you can choose it. I mean, to get on a little rant for myself, I do that with people. Uh, you guys know my big thing is is um, animal, you know, adoption, sh adopt, not shop, that kind of thing. And so when I talk to people and they're like, but I really want this dog, I'm like, okay, then let's go in steps. You can find uh, rescues that are specifically for that breed. Okay, oh, you can't do that? You have to buy a dog? All right, then offset your doggy carbon footprint by donating to a shelter or, you know, giving time. Like, there's a lot of steps that we can all do. It doesn't just have to be this either or. It's a choosing battles thing, right, guys? Yeah, and then there's one thing that we do is we actually grow loofah plants. I don't know if you do that. Oh, uh-uh. Like. So, yeah, you can grow loofah, and we use that to, you know, help with cleaning the dishes and things like that as well. So. That's, that, that's I love that. Right. <laughs> now, is that something you can do inside, or is that – because, listen, let's oh, face it, you guys. I've got three different areas that these folks are coming from, so there's got, you know there's a lot of factors. Um, but we're talking more in general, so is that you, something no, you can You'd do? have to grow it outside, but it's so invasive, it'll probably come inside. So just <laughs> <laughs> Is it like invasion of the loofah snatchers? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, how about bees? Let's talk about that. Oh, I'd love bee. to talk about bees. Give yeah. me some bee talk. Okay. Like, I mean, obviously, we can't all have, you know, because uh, what was funny is uh, I was in the guest bathroom and I saw this like like hazmat suit guy walk by with a smoker, and it was my brother like going out to check on the girls and the bees, and it was it, I was like, what the? F and then I realized it was that. So you know, they've got a space for it, but not everybody can do that. So how can we support that initiative? Well, first oh, of all, I mean, go ahead, go ahead, get it, get it. I don't know if people know that if you eat. It, the honey that you're eating, you should try and eat local honey. 
And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is it's eating the local plants in your area. So it'll actually help you better with your allergies and things of that nature. Yes. So it's not just, you know, the honey's good and local and you're supporting local. It actually makes you physically better. Again, one more positive reason to eat local, right? Uh, but, it has to be raw honey. It can't right. be the cooked honey because the raw honey still has the pollen bits in it. Yep, right. Gotcha. The junk. The good junk, right? Good junk. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, uh, Wayne Metter, can you pop in on that? You got any thoughts on it? Well, I'll tell you what. I don't have uh, I don't have bees yet. It's something that I want to do, but I'm waiting until I find you know a piece of property that's out in the country that I can build into a homestead and be sustainable and use it as a teaching facility. So, um, what I do now. I leave my coffee cup outside when it's pollen season and let all the pollen land on the coffee and drink it. I mean, I don't know. You know, I don't know if it works, but awesome, okay. Wayne. Um, but that's nice. what I do. Anyway. Oh, well, but this is little simple stuff, you guys. This is what I wanted to do the show about. So go ahead. Well, my, my deal about bees and pollinators in general, so pollinators are far more than just bees. Yeah. Uh, really, like, for example, the magnolia is coming out all over the country right now. What pollinates a magnolia are beetles, not bees. Um, and butterflies and hummingbirds right. are all considered pollinators. Mm -hmm. And so my goal this year is to start up an initiative where more people are growing pollinator foods. Now, I painted, um, we had a graffiti thing happen on my property, and the gangbangers came and painted my back fence. <laughs> and so I painted over it with a beautiful painting, and right now I'm in big trouble with the city and my homeowners association because of it, the whole other story. Uh, but it had pollinators on it. And so Brookfield Zoo contacted me from Chicago and said, hey, we also are doing a pollinator initiative. We have a dream. The dream now this is what's really interesting. The dream is to build a pollinator corridor from Chicago to St. Louis. Mm. A stretch of area. It got me thinking, this is going to totally be something I really get it totally be, something I really focus on over the next five years. Because when you, if you remember the statistic from that, uh, the little sheet that I put up, nine billion people are going to need food by the year 2050. If that's true, and we eliminate our pollinators, that's 25 to 40 percent of our food no longer available for us. Hmm. That means a whole lot of people are going to starve. Is the bottom line. So protecting the pollinators and finding a way to keep pollinators in action is really important. So building gardens, um, even if you just have a container that has flowering plants in it on your front balcony, uh, brilliant idea and a great way to help your community. And then I would just start scaring people and say, go watch that movie Soylent Green from back in the, <laughs> from back in the day. And see how screwed we are if we don't get our craft together, right? How do you know about that? You're only 28, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for that. No, I, I this is the kind of stuff we need to hear, though, are just that the these tips and tricks and things, and a little bit, of, I don't want to say fear factor, because again, guys, that's not what you're about either. It's not a fear message. It's more of alternative, right? Yeah, find something good and do it. Let's see if we've got any other. Um, oh, so let's talk about the difference real quick but, um, with what's homesteading as opposed to just kind of sustainable living. Anybody? Uh, not well, my category. You boys, pick yeah. it up. Yeah, you know, your boys, um, pick it up. <laughs> honestly, I don't know the definition, but I'll tell you what it means to me. To me, uh, homesteading means taking a piece of property, whether or not it has um, buildings on it or not, or has a stream or a well already there, and making it your home. And and you know, back in the day, uh, when the government had homesteads that they were giving out for people so that they would uh, m get to move them out west, further west. Um, that's what homesteading was, but today it's taking a piece of property that you've purchased or have access to and turning it into a sustainable um, homestead that you can live off of rather than having to rely on resources that are around you uh, in the environment. So, um, right. that, to me, that's what homesteading is. Well, and you guys know about my... oh, It's go not ahead, even Wayne. just food, it, it, it's also creating clothing. Yes. So it's the whole yeah. scope, right? So mm -hmm. all electricity, all of those things. We haven't even touched on hemp, by the way. I mean, that the, that yeah. stuff is the bomb. I'm rolling some up now, so just uh, yeah. 
Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, when you were talking about paper, that's what made me think of hemp back uh, during that conversation. And you got you ladies were talking so much. But, no, I, I didn't have time to, to bring that up, and I'm a huge advocate for hemp, and you know this already, Mia, and, yes. and I will... I will oh, wait, let's, I love how Wayne's got props. Hey, you like that, <laughs> right? for the war. Get That's it, brother. Awesome. Uh, I wish people would just get over that, because it's... Yeah, like, you know, no, it's, it's time to move on, and it's time to grow, and it's time to take down the um, the reason why hemp it's, is the illegal stigma. in the first place is because of the, the um, uh, uh, wood and paper companies. And, and, and they're, they're the, the ones that have lobbied Congress initially so that they could produce more paper out of trees um, rather than using hemp. And mm. the same thing applies. Now, one more thing. When you're talking about paper, a way to reduce your impact just a little bit, instead of getting coffee filters that are the bleach white coffee filters, go buy the bamboo ones. And you can get those on Amazon. Super easy to get. They're nice. not bleached, and it takes less... Um, uh, resources to make. Oh, post that for us too. Hey, real quick, my brother Joey G is out in the audience. Joey G and Gola, uh, he would love to know what tips VS for bringing other family members over to the sustainable side side of the fence. Obviously, behind, besides uh, watching this, and then he also says, "I don't know if I'm man enough for the paper towel challenge." That's okay, <laughs> darling. Find something else that makes your world go Come around. Come on, baby, you can do it. Exactly. <laughs> um, Oh, and Debbie Jess has a quick comment. But, yeah, guys, could you jump into that, too? Because, you know, obviously the, the circles that I run in, this is a really easy conversation for us to have and to get fired up. But there are some folks that are old school. So let's talk about some spoon feeding on that on that side. Again, I think it starts down, you know, what's the pain points, right? I mean, we all have money issues. Mm -hmm. But I'm in Louisiana, so I'm always going to hit on the food aspect. I mean, taste this versus taste that. What's the difference? It's cooked the same, but one's good and one's not. And there's a reason for that. So I think if you can get back to the basics, right, and uh, and show them how's it going to benefit them versus the world, because that's kind of where it all starts, right? It's all about me, me, me. But so if we can make people feel comfortable and realize that we are solving your problem, but we're also making a bigger impact on our community and culture around us, then why wouldn't you want to? That is, okay, that's such a sweet argument, and you are a wonderful man. No one will listen to that argument in my realm of my circle of friends and family. The argument that they will listen to is, will it save me money? If it won't save me money, then eh, I'm not so sure I'm going to do it. And we're talking about recycling a tin can. Take a little tin can and throw it in the recycling bin. You've got two bins in your kitchen, and they still can't decide which one to do. It is a battle that I think it's a this giant battle that I, I face all the time, and that the winner is the one who wins by exposure. So let's talk about my husband. My husband is a big man, and he doesn't like to be green. But then something happened. When I started converting everything in our household, he started supporting me. And then one day he sent me an email of some kind, and at the bottom it said, please do not print this, save a tree. Well, I, I was like blown away <laughs> all the challenge of getting him to convert over. And he's like, please, save a tree. And I'm like, God love you, man. You know? We're doing that. I yeah. was going to say, when you say he doesn't like the green initiative, he probably doesn't want to get laid either, does he? <laughs> I'm telling you, right? <laughs> uh, but it's about the, uh, if you live by example, mm -hmm. eventually your family will follow, and then they'll be leading an example, and eventually they'll do it. If not, money seems to be the primary motivator, which is tough with organic foods. I mean, to grow your own organic food is definitely cheaper. There's mm -hmm. no denying it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, to go out and buy, like, uh, like I was at the Whole Foods yesterday eating sushi because I love it there, mm -hmm. and they had butter. And I went, my God, the price of organic butter. You know, yeah. it, like, blew me away. And, yeah. Uh, oh, I have an idea for you. What's this that? might Wayne and Wayne, this might be a good idea. Okay, so I we looked at all our food and what we ate the most is the thing that I decided we should change to be organic. And you're not going to believe this, but what we eat the most in our household is eggs. I really? love eggs. I eat them every morning. We sometimes have them for dinner. It's like this big deal. We eat, eat, eat eggs. So we went, we spent the extra money on organic eggs at, because it's the thing we consume the most, and we're trying to make a go of it, and it's been working. 
And I think that's what I was talking about with, with the choices and so forth. And then to Wayne's point, too, I think you were saying that as well, Wayne Nix, is like it is the kind of, that's the part of the me, me, me. Like you get right. pain points and it could be, it, it, I think it's money and it does kind of start with, with those pain points as well. I love mm -hmm. the egg idea. And anybody here in Colorado, please tell me what's a good place. I need, I need somebody with some chickens. Well, and here's another thing about the money aspect, right? If you spend the money on food, you're going to spend less money on medication. Right, and medication keeps going up and up and up, and that's another reason why I got back into the food. You know, getting and knowing where it's come from. It's just a holistic type of approach. Couple other quick things, guys, and then we're going to have to get to our bat crap crazies and call to action. Can you believe? I, yeah, I can believe it. We chatted it up that much. Mark's got a good point. If you have a weakened immune system, do not eat raw honey. Don't and don't give it to babies. Um, so there's probably some good on that. Um, Layla Martin, hi girl. Raw honey's awesome. Mix it in hot water with Bragg's apple cider. Drink it for allergies. Amen to that one. I'm a big fan of that. Um, you had a comment up there, Wayne? Yeah. Um, yeah, our younger communities are so much more balanced, motivated, and able to accept changes, it seems to me, question mark. You know, I don't know the answer to that, but it's something that I thought I'd bring up because I think Shauna could probably speak to this question. Yep, and then we're going to wrap it up after that, too, and Wayne, you still got the comment up because you like Digidus that much. So, yeah, Shauna, what do you think about that, honey? I totally yeah. missed the question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's okay. Um, our younger you? communities... Well, you're for you to place. I was busy reading the comments. I'm so... You people, you're distracting me. <laughs> well, that's my backpack. <laughs> Ask again, Wayne. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Are younger communities more um, susceptible to change when it comes to the sustainability and growing food than younger communities? And if so, why and how can we fix it? Oh, I think that young people are open, open, open for it. Okay. okay, remember, when we were a kid and we were back, uh, uh, the reason that no one in our generation will litter is because we remember the crying Indian. The Native American with his crying, American. with all the garbage. Right, oh. or give a hoot, don't pollute. Uh -huh. I mean, we remember those from Saturday morning TV. That was our deal. And so I, if somebody throws something out of a car in front of me, I will drive up to Figure the car. Bags. And give them the guilty face. Oh, like, me too. The, the are you gonna do, I will pull off. over, yeah, mm -hmm. and kick your ass. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we were raised with. So my point being is that um, children that are raised with the, the, the right message about the environment make an effort. And we're an example of that in the give a hoot, don't pollute concept. I, mean, I, I, I we totally remember that commercial too. Now there's a couple comments too. Kirsten Hancock, hey girl, saying battery hen farming is disgusting. Don't even get me started. I swear we could do a whole show. Yeah, we could. About commercial farming and all that. Again, like obviously with my, me being on on the animal rights type of thing. And Bob Boss has been napping the whole time. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You know he loves him some Shauna. Um, but we could get into the whole thing on that. So listen, we're at 53 after the hour. So um, do you guys want to do a quick transition? Do you ready for it? We're ready. Okay. What's on the bottom? What's on the bottom? What's on the bottom? I'm wearing a skirt. What are you guys wearing? Come on, Shauna. What's on the bottom? Oh, jeans. Come on, girl. Stand up. I got to see it. There's Wayne. Mm -hmm. oh, hey, I'm girl. too short. Sure. Dang it. I'm too short. Called each other last night. <laughs> <laughs> and what about my Wayne Nix? What's on the bottom, brother? Oh, I got it. You know. oh, woo! Woo! Okay, apparently, we got the bonus panty shot. <laughs> I'm too short. I can't even stand up. I know, honey. I love it. I do. I love how Sean and Wayne are wearing uh, Wayne Meadow wearing the same outfit. So, all right, darling, <laughs> listen. Seriously, I'm gonna bust through this, and I'm gonna start with Shauna. What are you bat crap crazy about, and what is your call to action? I am writing a book. I have two things. I'm writing a book. Uh, okay, by the way, all the excitement that's happened. Remember, I had to self-publish before. Now publishers are after me, and I'm publishing books. That's I have three books girl. coming out this year, and one of them is on vertical and living walls, where I show people, yeah. everyday people, how they can make pollinator gardens and aphrodisiac <laughs> gardens and all kinds of gardens <laughs> that you can have in urban areas and the second thing is I'm trying to do more eco travel touch nature in a special way I've done video series on it but this year I want to do even more when so I saw you did the the sequoias um, I did the sequoias day. holy crap I hugged a sequoia you, oh, did. you guys have to go check that so out on our cool. website it was I awesome so that's so those are call to action and what are you back crap crazy about oh you got to have something you got uh, well, I guess I think it's more about just the ongoing green thing, getting more people to change to to live socially good and to do it the right way. 
And I think you should be bat crap crazy about those friends that are going to come help you uh, start the oh. week. <laughs> I have a call out right now on my Facebook page. If anyone's in Illinois, please help me weed this weekend. I'm totally serious. I will buy you martini. I will make you martinis while you're at my house. There you go. Yeah, that's almost to... worth a plane ticket to get there for. <laughs> martinis. I'll have them all ready for you. Oh God, I love this girl. I'm just saying. <laughs> all right, Wayne Metter, what are you bat crab crazy about, honey? And what's your call to action? Yep. Uh, well, I think you all know I'm bat crap crazy about making a difference and leaving a positive impact, and I think we all need to do that. We all have a chance to, we all leave a ripple with our life, and we, it can either be a positive one or a negative one, and that's our choice. So that's what I'm crazy about is getting people to wake up to that reality and realize what's going on in the world around them. Uh, second thing I'm going to post after the show, I'll put links to all of my, I already did if you want to look back there, but links to all okay. of my, my stuff online. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put a link to five uh, YouTube channels that I'm very closely related with and good friends with, um, and they're all gardening channels. So if you're looking to, to start to understand how to garden, um, follow my YouTube channel, my personal YouTube channel. Follow these five gardeners because they can help you learn at a very um, uh, entry-level uh, learning uh, and they'll help you understand how to garden just a little more. more and that's what it's all about. And uh, Christopher Vogelman actually says you're worm crap crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. what I am. Um, uh, well, one more thing. I'm reading a book called Paradise Lot um, by a couple of guys that took a tenth of an acre lot and 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 Shauna will know who they are, but uh, up in Connecticut or Massachusetts, made a sustainable um, uh, living facility for them and their family on in, in the city. Um, so I'm going to put a link to that because it's a really incredible book. Sean, I'll let you plug your own stuff, but um, that's a book that I found very, very helpful. And uh -huh. last but not least, I know you're running out of time, but last but not least, I'm going to be going down the last two weeks of June um, to help out a friend of mine who has a YouTube channel called Go For Green Living, and I'll put all of these links in the comments after the show. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about homesteading, building your own solar panels, um, how to garden with aquaponics, how to uh, build straw bale houses, how to build cob houses, um, all homesteading topics, um, uh, foraging your own knives, etc. So it's going to be an incredible two weeks towards the end of June, and I'd really like you to be able to join me live on mm. some of the HOAs that I'll be doing. So. I can't wait to see that. I know our brother Randy Halarski, I probably just wet his pants when you said hydroponics, so... <laughs> He's out there in the audience. Let's give him a shout. All right, Wayne Nix, uh, what are you back crap crazy about, honey? What's your call to action? Well, I mean, I love to teach no matter what that may be, and I love to cook, and I want to be able to get to the hearts and the minds of people, and the way to do that is to get through them through their stomach, right? So I can teach them um, how to cook and how we, how we have some unique and different products, especially here in South Louisiana, mm -hmm. and to show people that you can mix things up a little bit. And that's what we want to do on the show, looking for cooking. You know, I use recipes, but they're really only guidelines. And just like everything else in life, you need to kind of color outside the lines and really see what you can do with things. And just have fun, right? Get back to being human again. Amen. And then your show is this Monday on Cinco de Mayo, right? That's right. Cinco de Mayo. That mayo really recipe looks so good. Mm. <laughs> Can't wait to get some of that. So, and that, and then make sure to post your links on there too. Yes, please. Okay. Okay, guys. Listen, we are going to wrap it up. Uh, let's see. My back crap crazy. It's going to be a little bit different. I'm back crap crazy for the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee. They've agreed to come on my show in two weeks. I'm going to lose my mind if I could actually go there and hang out with the elephants. I probably would. So I'm going to post a link for them too. I'd love for you guys to go circle them because they've got some good stuff going on. So that's my bat crab crazy. Yay! Yay, yeah, right? And uh, you guys, that's it. So again, we're going to have all the links here. Uh, what's going to happen next is you guys know I do the bat crab crazy posts in the next couple of days. That's going to have all the information. And I'm going to do a blog post. So make sure to go and subscribe at themeaconnect.com going to have a write-up on all the stuff that we talked about today, but plus I just want you to go subscribe to me because I said so. How's that for you? All right, guys, that's it. Listen, Chef Dennis is on after this, so make sure to head over and watch Chefy. Chefy and I have a new show again called Food and Booze. We'll let you know when that's rolling it out. It's really just going to be us going to local restaurants and boozing it up and eating. <laughs> I love that. I want to play. Well, I think we just need to get out to Chicago, what needs to happen. Oh, Actually, what we should oh, do is we need to go down to Wayne Nix and have him cook for us 
Then yep. flying over to Wayne Nutter. We can do all kinds. I think we just need to make a little victory tour. So, that's that's it, guys. We just wrapped it up on an hour. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye. 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 Bye.